The Lonely Runner problem is one of these really cool, really simple seeming problems in mathematics that we actually haven't proven yet. More properly, it's the Lonely Runner conjecture. The problem is set up this way. You have a set of racers going around a track. Uh, and they're all going at different speeds. They start at the same point, but they all go at different speeds. Maybe their speeds are dramatically different. Maybe their speeds are only slightly different. What you do in the Lonely Runner problem is keep track of the distance between each runner and their closest neighbor. Now you can see they started out relatively close to each other because these speeds are uh, pretty uh, similar. Uh, but they are getting farther apart because those differences are becoming exacerbated as the race continues. And what you're doing is, at each frame of the animation, trying to keep track of the distance between each runner and their nearest neighbor. The conjecture states that at some point in the race, if you let the race go on forever, at some point each runner will become lonely. Lonely here means that they are separated from their nearest neighbors by a distance equal to one divided by the number of runners. So in this case, I think we have nine runners. So with a, with a circumference of one. So this is a circle that's set up with a circumference of one. And we wanna identify at what point the distance between one runner and the next runner becomes uh, one ninth, one over nine. We're tracking those distances here, and one ninth is shown here as the black bar, and you can see they are on average getting farther apart, so you kind of see this cluster of values trending upward. So graphically, the conjecture states that at some point, every trace on this graph, the distance between each runner and their nearest neighbor, will eventually reach or surpass uh, one ninth. Let's take a look at how we encode this. So we want to set up a circle with a circumference of one. That's really weird to think about because we usually think about the radius as being a, a rational or, or maybe or maybe at least non-transcendental number. And then it's the circumference that gets the pi on it. So in order to get a circumference of one, we set the radius equal to one half over pi or one over two pi. Then we're gonna set up a list of speeds. So again, a list in Python is just a collection of values. So this tells you how many runners there are and what arrangement of speeds they have. Then we're going to create a list of runners. These runners are going to be represented graphically as spheres. So we're using vpython's sphere command here. Uh, we give each of them the same position. So they all start out at x equals r, y equals zero, right? They're all starting at the theta equals zero spot on this unit circle. We give them their speed here, but more important than their speed is their angular speed omega, and that's going to be the speed divided by r, using this great equation from intro mechanics, where the tangential speed equals radius times the angular speed. And we'll keep track of their theta as well, because that's the actual position variable that we'll be uh, updating. We put on each of them a G curve. So this is to create this family of curves we have down here. Uh, you can see we just ended the simulation because each runner became lonely. So this purple one surpassed, uh, possibly more of them surpassed. They're, they're lying on top of each other there on the graph. And then this last one finally reached one ninth. And so the code terminated when the conjecture worked. Uh, and then we're keeping track of whether each one of them has been lonely. So this lonely variable here that's attached to each runner, this is an answer to the question of has this runner been lonely? Meaning has their distance to their nearest neighbor ever been one divided by the number of runners? So to set up the animation, we create a, a small step size. Uh, the smaller DT is, the more accurate the, the simulation is. Uh, but it will take longer if you make the DT smaller. That's the only trade-off. Um, we're going to set a T max just so that this thing does not run forever, but you can make that as high as you want. Basically, however long you have to wait for the code to run, you can set that higher. Uh, here we create uh, the lonely line. This is that black flat trace that we have here, just so we can visually remind ourselves what the lonely distance is that we're looking for. And then we start the animation loop. This loop, this next chunk of code that's all indented here, so indentation in Python means it is a loop. It is the thing that is going to be repeated underneath this while. Uh, so underneath this while, we've got 
uh, two conditions, right? We're gonna run as long as T is less than T max and as long as not everyone has been lonely. So think of that in the reverse. It means if time surpasses T max, we stop, or if everybody becomes lonely, we stop. Inside the loop, we use the vPython rate function just to set the animation rate. If you want to try to make it go faster, you can add another zero to this, uh, but eventually that will run up to your computer stop speed. The rate function does not interfere with the accuracy or any of the physics. It's just there to control the animation. So here we're gonna update the runner's position. So we're gonna use the update procedure here where we take each runner's theta value, that's its angle around this unit circle, and we're gonna add to it, so plus equals means add to this value, its uh, omega value times dt, times our small step size. Then we're gonna update the sphere's position, so these are the two lines that actually move the sphere on the screen, because whenever you change this POS position vector, you're actually moving it in that three-dimensional space. So we're updating x and y, just using cosine and sine, just like you would in the unit circle. Then we're gonna check for whether the runners have all been lonely. So the way you check for whether uh, uh, multiple things have happened uh, using logical variables is you can take your kind of master logical variable here, all lonely, and set it equal to true. And then if anything changes that, if it turns out that one of these runners has not been lonely yet, then we're gonna switch it to false. And it only takes one failed case for this to become false. So you start out true and then you change it to false as needed. So we're, again, we're gonna loop over all the runners. Uh, we're gonna calculate the minimum distance between runner R and all the other runners. So that's gonna start out as two pi R because that's all the way around the circle. Uh, technically, they can only get as far as pi R. So this is, this is an absolute maximum that any of them could possibly be. So anytime you're trying to minimize something, you have to start with a maximum possible value. Okay, now we need to ask the question, is runner R lonely during this animation frame? Well, again, we're gonna start this out as true and switch it to false if it turns out they are lonely. So in order to check the distance between runner R and all the other runners, we need to set up another loop over the other runners. So R2 here is gonna represent all the other runners and we're only gonna consider cases where R2 is not equal to R, right? This is where it's all the others, not this runner and themselves. So we calculate the distance between R and R2. Uh, this is taking the arc length equation. So we take their two theta values, take the difference between those. So we're opening up the angle between those two position vectors. Uh, use modulus pi, just so that we get the smallest possible angle. So we're not accidentally doing uh, a greater than 180 degrees. And we multiply that by R to turn it into the arc length, the actual distance along the track between these two runners. Uh, D min, we're gonna update as the minimum between this value of D and the current champion for D min. So D min is always gonna either stay the same or decrease, it's gonna seek out the minimum there. And then we're gonna check for whether this uh, distance qualifies for runner R to be lonely, right? We only need one close runner for them to not be lonely, right? It, it only takes uh, uh, one close neighbor that is closer than one over n for runner r to not be lonely. And so that's gonna turn lonely now for this runner on or off, right? Not on. So that's gonna, sorry. So that's gonna turn lonely now off for this runner if they have a close enough neighbor. Then just so that we can visualize it, this is not necessary for the computer to determine whether the conjecture has happened, but this is for us, the humans, to look at this. Uh, this is where we're graphing for this runner R what the minimum distance is. So each of these graphs here represents for each moment in the animation, what is the minimum distance between say this runner and its nearest neighbor. It looks like the nearest neighbor is this one here. So it would be this distance. You notice it tends to increase because they are going to get farther apart as they go around. So basically whenever you lap somebody, your distance is going to drop down to zero. And that's how you're able to get this little uh, uh, sawtooth pattern here. But you notice they keep jumping up farther up each time before they fall back down. Okay, so here we're gonna update the record of whether this runner R has been lonely, right? Lonely now is whether they're lonely in this frame. And r.lonely keeps track of whether they have ever been lonely in any frame. So it only has to be true once, right? With an or here, they could have been lonely before 
or they could be lonely now. So once this r.lonely switches to true, it stays on true for the rest of the simulation. And then here we evaluate whether everybody has been lonely because r.lonely might have changed. And so if everybody else has been lonely and uh, r has been lonely, well, then we know that everyone uh, has been lonely. So this loop itself is gonna repeat, like we said, until uh, the time expires and we just run out of time to run the simulation or until everyone has been lonely. And so when we come out of the loop, this undented line 51 here, if everyone has been lonely, then we say that the conjecture worked. Otherwise we say the conjecture was not found, right? It's not that the conjecture failed because you have to let this run an infinite amount of time in order to see if it works or not, uh, which we can't really do on a computer. So this is just to say within these bounds, the conjecture worked or the conjecture had not worked yet, right? But we can't prove what's gonna happen after the simulation ends. That's what makes it a conjecture. So we saw this uh, pretty extreme case here where the speeds were very close to each other, right? If we go back up to the top, these have very speeds that are very close to each other, right? 1.001 through 1.009 in even steps of 0.001. You could make the speeds more drastically different. So here we go from one through nine for the speeds. And this uh, this setup actually runs very quickly. You see, they basically get around one lap here. And yeah, it all happens within this first uh, couple of, uh, really within one second, uh, all the runners have become lonely. So if I make those more similar, uh, maybe we make each of these a half. So one over two, two over two, three over two, four over two, five over two, six over two, seven over two, eight over two, nine over two. It'll take slightly longer because they're moving faster and those differences are a little less drastic. Oh yeah, it took an extra, you know, fraction of a second there. Let's try another one. Let's try one, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5. There'll still be nine of them. It doesn't really matter how many you put in. You could put in a hundred runners. Uh, yeah, that took uh, a little bit longer. That took one and a, that took just over one second there. Uh, let's try one and 1.1 1 .1, and then we'll just go up to 1.9. So we'll try 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. 5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. Uh, let's try that collection. Uh, yeah, that'll actually be 10 runners. Okay, so you can see it took uh, a little bit longer. It took us out to uh, almost two seconds that time. And you can also see, you know, you have this one lapping, this one, this, this one lapping, this one by the time they get around. Again, you can make this any number of runners, right? So you could keep going 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. And it takes, it takes a little bit longer, just a little bit longer. Really, you have to get down to very close speeds like this scenario here in order for uh, this to take an appreciable amount of time, right? We sat and watched this one for that very beginning. Uh, it's it's going to take them a while to, uh, to lap each other because, the, again, because the speeds are so similar. Uh, you could even try not doing uniform spacing, like maybe you jump all the way from here to a speed of 10, right? Uh, so let's see what happens with that. Basically, that one's going to loop around. So this one that's looping around really quickly, it's lonely all the time, right? Because it keeps zipping around the circle. It's always going to be lonely. You might as well remove it from the simulation at this point because it's definitely, uh, it's definitely going to be lonely. Although that is going to interfere with the other's ability to be lonely uh, because this one's zipping around it's going to be uh, it's going to be harder to capture a time where it's farther away from so anyway it's a fun problem to work with and play around with and explore obviously you're not going to be able to prove this with a code like this right because you'd have to try every possible combination of speeds for any number of runners up to infinity and allow the code to run for an infinite amount of time. But these codes are useful because it allows us to explore the scenario. It allows us to get an idea of what's going on in this problem and get ideas about how we might prove that it is true. It certainly looks true. It certainly makes sense, but we haven't proven it yet. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed playing with this. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.